Here's the number out of Nova Scotia this morning. 63 new COVID-19 cases on Sunday. The highest single day total in Nova Scotia since the pandemic began. Officials identified 115 cases in total over the weekend. And Premier Ian Rankin says new restrictions are coming. The official order in the next few days to slow the spread. He also announced fines are doubling for anyone who breaks public health orders on gatherings. We're going to talk to Nova Scotia's chief medical officer, Dr. Robert Strang, in just a moment about all of this. But first, Brett Ruskin, who's in Halifax with these latest developments. Brett, good morning. Good morning, Heather. These numbers are certainly lower than other provinces, but not what Nova Scotians are used to. And so uh, there is this $1,000 fine that started that was in place throughout the pandemic. It's now doubled to $2,000. So you might think, why, why the increased penalty for violating the Health Protection Act? Well, remember Friday when we were talking about the gathering limits that were announced in Halifax to try to deal with this upsurge in COVID-19 cases? Five people inside or outside are allowed to gather. That was as of Friday, that same day, that same night. Uh, police responded to a home in downtown Halifax with 22 young people there. How do we know they were young people? Well, they posted pictures of their $1,000 tickets on social media, waving them in front of the camera taking the picture. And so on Sunday, uh, Premier Aaron Rankin, as well as uh, Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Robert Strang, had a news conference, uh, one that they don't typically have on Sundays. Here's what Premier Aaron Rankin had to say in response to this 22-person gathering. I was infuriated to find out about a household gathering, a party in Halifax in the middle of a lockdown. Dr. Strang and I are both so frustrated about uh, this irresponsible behavior. Why? Why would you put yourself at risk? And worse, someone else. And so those tickets are now $2,000 a piece uh, as, of, as of today, essentially. And so we're not sure if any of those new $2,000 tickets have been handed out yet, but they are certainly an increased penalty for violating the Health Protection Act. Heather. Brett, as we were wrapping up last week, we were talking about new restrictions taking effect in the Halifax Central Zone. Now we're talking province-wide. So what are the restrictions that people elsewhere in Nova Scotia can expect? Yeah, so the other part of that news conference yesterday was, uh, I mean, Halifax right now, five people gathering limit. Uh, the other part of the news conference was the elsewhere, everywhere else in the province, 10 people is now the new gathering limit. And also the general sense, the general feeling, the general messaging is don't move around too much. If you're in one corner of the province, don't visit someone else in another corner. Try to stay in your community, stay in your county, stay in your area to try to prevent spread of this virus to other parts of the province so that uh, it can be better managed. I mean, uh, there was originally the, the, you know, we heard from Dr. Strang the hope saying we have an opportunity now to lock this down. We've seen what the other provinces have done. We have the chance to lock it down if we do it right. Heather. Brett Ruskin, thank you very much. Live in Halifax. Now to Dr. Robert Strang, who is Nova Scotia's Chief Medical Officer of Health. He is in Halifax. Dr. Strang, welcome back to our program. Good morning, Heather. Thank you for having me on. Well, thank you for giving us some time today. I'm wondering if we have, through you, any new numbers to work with this morning. 63 was the latest figure we had yesterday. Is there any new number to report today? I haven't got the report from our epidemiologists yet. It's a little early for that. I'm, 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 I said, as I said yesterday, I'm fully expecting high case numbers for the next few days. It'll take about a week but to uh, see the impact of what we put in place in the Halifax area on Friday. Um, and everything we announced yesterday and the more details to come today is about uh, making sure that if the virus does spread beyond Halifax, that, uh, that, that, that it doesn't have an opportunity to spread widely. Okay. That we can keep it up. So there was the indication from you and the Premier yesterday that that official order will be coming sometime this week. Did I just hear from you that, that the details are coming today for the province? Absolutely. We'll be, we'll be, we have a briefing this afternoon uh, and we'll be announcing more details. And uh, uh, as always, once we announce it, uh, there's folks working on the official order to, uh, uh, that I sign off of and it comes, it'll uh, come into effect very shortly thereafter. Okay. 
But 63 is the number that we have of we has, as we have our conversation this morning, the largest single day total in Nova Scotia since the start of the pandemic. Yours is a province and you as, a, as the chief medical officer of health, your response has been so strong throughout. And yet here you are, highest numbers ever. And in many ways, you know, almost like worse situation than ever before. I mean, how does that feel? Well, it's it's uh, it's it's concern. I'm very I'm very concerned. I, people have heard me say I've been very anxious for the last few days. Uh, we've done a very good job, and uh, um, this has concerns. We ha we have a young adult in the ICU. I learned yesterday. Uh, this is not just about uh, elderly people in long term care facilities. Uh, you know, this is having a serious impact. And this is the new. The, the, this is unfortunately the world with the new variant strains. They they once they get in, they spread very quickly and rapidly, and they are having a bigger impact on on younger people. So we, we are acting very early still, strongly, like we've done all along. And like our colleagues in Newfoundland, when they had a similar kind of surge in the St. John's area, in New Brunswick, in the Edmondson area, if you act early and strongly uh, on, you can bring this under control. But it's uh, but it, we need everybody, uh, every Nova Scotian, to do their part and and, and to do the do the things that keep each other safe. Yes, I want to come back to the point you made about young people in just a moment. But you did also mention variants. Many other provinces are talking about a sixty percent um, variants now making up about sixty percent of their cases. To what degree are the variants driving the surge that you're seeing now? Virtually all of our cases in the last uh, probably week to ten days are now variants. We're we're acting under the assumption that everything is a variant. Uh, the way it's spreading uh, sh uh, shows that. We do some initial screening in the lab, uh, and then it's sent to the national lab for confirmation. But that takes about a week, so we're we're just we're acting like everything's a variant uh, and, and adjusting our public health response uh, to that, uh, which means you have to be faster, which means that even things that a year ago we would have considered low or moderate risk for exposure are now much higher risk. And uh, uh, it, it, the, the pace of this is, 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 is very, makes it difficult to stay in front of. Yes. And so as a result, the measures that Brett was just reporting on the, that we're going to hear more detail about today and the doubling of the fines. I'm just wondering, you mentioned too, Newfoundland and New Brunswick, that, that clampdown that they have resorted to very quickly to get things under control, that short, sharp sort of shock. Uh, at what point, though, if the case numbers in Nova Scotia do not subside, do you think about doing even tighter measures, things like, I don't know, curfews, wider restrictions. What is the, the threshold then for you for even more restrictions? Uh, we don't have a specific number threshold, but certainly uh, lots of discussion uh, within public health, my colleagues and, and, and with the Premier's office here. Uh, we put things in place for Halifax uh, Friday. Uh, we'll watch very carefully as it, we, we, you know, with COVID, you need to watch things start to see a sign um, and so we're gonna we're gonna do that uh, before we say what we're put in place right now isn't working but uh, we'll continue to watch things and and if uh, if and we will continue to act very early on but again you need to give uh, what you put in place you need to give it a, a sufficient time to at least not to not to make things completely better but at least to see some some trend things trending in the right direction that would suggest that, that you're starting to have an impact and that takes at least about a week a week. All right. So we'll, we'll keep watching this with you. The doubling of the fines and the young people. We'll put up these pictures again. I'm wondering what effect you think the doubling of fines might have. And it might have, might have it had any bearing, might it have given pause to the people at that weekend party and the Dow students who went on social media sort of to mock the tickets that they received, Dr. Strang. I mean, what do you think of that and what do you think of them? Well, first of all, that's extremely uh, irresponsible behavior. Um, the, the fines or people need to, the fines are there to, to make sure people understand that that this is serious and there will be consequences. Uh, but I asked Nova Scotians yesterday to. Uh, to not focus so much on what others are doing and to blame others, uh, but to focus on ourselves and what, what we need to make sure that people are doing, every single one of us are doing what we can do. We can only control our own behaviors and then we need everybody to step up and be their best and, 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 and do all the things that uh, follow all the restrictions, not just to the letter, but also to the spirit of what's in the public health order, to, to everybody focusing on themselves so we can keep each other safe. Yes, and yet, 
I'm wondering if you're concerned about young Nova Scotians not getting the message. You mentioned you have a young person in your ICU right now. I don't know if you can give us any further detail on that case specifically, but we're certainly seeing hospitals across the country seeing younger and sicker patients, and obviously you are too there. And whether there's a degree of concern about uh, whether they're ignoring the realities. So I don't think it's just young people. I mean, we had, unfortunately, we had lots of reports, uh, even though we put things in place, uh, stay in, stay within Halifax uh, on Friday. Lots of reports of people from Halifax going outside of Halifax for to go shopping in other parts, you know, to Truro, to, to Bridgewater, people going for recreation. So I'm not going to point the finger just at young people. Uh, what, 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 what I said to Nova, again, to Nova Scotians, that, that there's many people that haven't, that aren't following the rules as close as they need to. So don't, don't look at, look outside you and try to blame others, look inside yourself and say, am I doing what's required? I'm reminded of your former premier and his uh, very strong call to stay the blazes home. Maybe it's time for, for you to get that saying going again. Well, we're, we're looking at that similar, you know, similar kind of messaging, but it, it, it's critical that people to control COVID, it, it, it moves with people. And so that's, our, that's a key part of what we're putting in place is slow down, limit movement uh, across the province. Uh, you stay home or close to home as much as possible. Uh, and, and that's what keeps the virus from uh, spreading amongst people. Okay. Dr. Strang, on this point, I will let you go. I do think I do want to ask just quickly if there is any further detail on that young patient in the ICU that you can share this morning. There's reports of, uh, you know, young teenagers who have passed away in Canada just in recent times. We're talking about under 20, now under the early teens. It's a big concern. What is this uh, most recent case, perhaps, that you can share with us in Nova Scotia? I don't have any more details. We're very care also, we also are very careful for privacy reasons, but I abide by our by my, my public health team that, you know, a, a young adult who is in the ICU and, and that is uh, that is a concerning. And if people aren't taking this seriously, well, they, you know, the fact, the impact on, on across all ages uh, should make them wake up. Okay. Dr. Strang, as always, we really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Have a good day. That's Nova Scotia's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Robert Strang.